We've now defined two B hat features. We've got the health check feature and the album feature. And we've seen how the health check is really all about a quick and simple validation that our API is up and it's actively able to serve requests. The album feature is more involved. We're testing all the HTTP verbs such as get, post, put, patch, and delete. And crucially, in order to test that we can get existing data, we need to have some existing data readily available. In the previous video, we covered that there are many ways that we could achieve this. For example, we might have some raw SQL files that we restore before each test is run, or maybe we would have access to Doctrine inside a Symfony project and we could new up various entities and then persist and flush them off to our database. And we've covered that that isn't possible because our test is completely isolated from our implementation. We're going to have multiple backends in different languages using different databases. So that makes that kind of setup a bit tricky. And instead, we're going to dog food our own API. Now, it's unintuitive and likely it's not ideal in the real world, but it's definitely a way to solve this problem that's kind of specific to our tutorial environment. OK, so before we go any further, we're going to have to cheat a little bit at this point. So if we do a vendor bin b hat, and I'm going to use the features, the health check feature, just to run one test there. And we can see that straight away, it can't connect to that base URI that we set up. Now this is gonna be a problem because if we can't hit that base URI, then all of our tests are going to sort of just fail with this same error over and over until it can hit something. And as we don't have any web server up and running at the moment, it's gonna make the whole process a little bit visually uninteresting to say the least. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump back to the bhat YAML. I'm gonna duplicate that line as commented out for the moment. I'm going to replace this entire line here with example.com. And at least now, if we send in our test, whilst it still fails, at least we get a little bit nicer feedback. So BHAT uses the concept of background to set the stage, so to speak, before each of our test scenarios takes place. This allows us to say, hey, before we run these tests, can we make sure that we have these records available in our database? That way we can say that when we run the tests, if we ask for all the records that the system knows about, if the system is behaving, we should get back all of those known records. So in our background step, we need to define a way that BHAT can get our system into a known good state. And to do this, we're gonna to have to post data into our JSON API. Now what this means is that our background step is going to implicitly test that our system can handle post requests. But this is a bit weird and unintuitive as we're gonna to have to do this step before every test is run. And so that's gonna happen before we've even tested that we can post a record in. So this means that we need to manually implement our post route immediately and then validate that the post test passes and only then can our other tests really take place. So this is really kind of unusual. And if I haven't been clear enough already, this approach is interesting, but it's likely not the way that you do this in a real project. Now for a Symfony specific approach, please have a look in the show notes where I have covered this process before. And there is one other thing to be aware of when doing things like this. So what we can do is we can send in our data, title, track count, release date and whatnot. But what we can't do is fake the ID. Now this isn't such a big deal for us because we're going to be using an auto incrementing integer. So this record is going to be number one, number two, number three, and so on. If you were using UUIDs, which is them long crazy strings, then this would be really difficult to test because then when you sent in a request, you wouldn't know what that UUID would be because it would be automatically generated and there's no easy way to figure that out. Now, as I've said a few times already, this setup is okay for our tutorial environment, but in a real world project, you wouldn't want to do this. Okay, so let's try and run our album feature at this point. So I'm just gonna up arrow there to bring back the previous line, send in the album feature, and it tries to run each of the individual scenarios and they all fail basically with this same step. And that's because in our background, this given there are albums with the following details is undefined. You can see that inside PHP Storm. And then what BHAT does nicely for us is when it figures out one of our steps is missing, it will give us the stub that we need to implement. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to pop it into our feature context. Let's paste that in there. Now again, we try and send in our test this time. We get a slightly different output. That's because we've actually implemented that, but it's throwing that pending exception, which we can see there. So we don't yet have an API into which we can send our post requests, but this isn't a showstopper. We're just going to have to use a little bit of creative thinking. So what I don't want to have to do is require Guzzle in this project. We've already got the Imbo BHAT API extension, and we saw that this implicitly brings in Guzzle. Now you may be thinking, well, 
because it's implicit, it's kind of hidden and we don't control it. And that's a very valid point. But by making use of the existing Imbo Beehat API extension code, we've already got access to Guzzle and it's already configured. So if we were to bring in Guzzle as an explicit dependency to our own project, we would also have to configure it again. So we'd end up with two definitions for the same thing, basically. Now, of course, this is all opinion and explicitness is often best. But as our setup's not going to get any more complex than this, I'm just going to piggyback onto the Beehat API extension and use its public functions or public methods to do our dirty work. So we're working inside the feature context. But all the guzzle or the interesting HTTP communication stuff's happening inside the API context that we saw in the previous video. So we need a way to use the exposed public API, aka all the public functions defined in this file, from our feature context. Now Behat allows intercontext communication via its gather context method. So let's quickly see if we can find that. So you can see we've got this gather context method. I'm just going to take a copy of that jump back into PHP Storm under the feature context file. Probably best put this just under the constructor. Make sure to bring in the required dependency if it would pick it up. It's really not having a good time of that one. We should just be able to copy it from here. Okay, so as it's not the mink context, I'm going to call mine the API context as that's effectively what we're pulling from. Set this up as a class property. And then we just need to doctor this statement here. Now I tend to work, honestly, just as, as a side note, I tend to work on Linux all the time. And so all the keyboard shortcuts that I like to use are not available to me when I'm recording videos. So sometimes if you're watching and you think, why didn't you know about that? It's like, well, yeah, I probably do. But unfortunately on uh, OS X, the keys are just like wrong, basically. Anyway, whatever. Right, so we need the API context. It would be super useful if it was helping me out with these strings today as well, but it's just not doing that for some reason. Right, okay, bhat API extension. It seemed to seem to want to help me there, but then it just sort of trolled me at the last second. So we're going to do context, API context, and that's fine, but then we don't need this locally available variable. So I'm just going to do scope get environment like that, get rid of that, and um, we'll see if we can't do a little bit of code tidying. No, it doesn't even want to do that. I like that. prefer it on multiple lines, but whatever. So really here, all we're doing is from a very high level, we're getting access to the API context file from our feature context file so that any of the public functions that it defines, we can then use inside our feature context. And this just means that we don't need to do much setup or define our own ways of working with HTTP requests. Now it's lazy at the expense of being a little bit more complex. And as the annotation here implies, this gets run before each of our test scenarios. And so we'll always have this API context available for any of our tests. So let's start implementing the interesting part of this. And we've got access to this table node and the table node is this content defined here. And whilst this is a table node, it is actually really our albums. So just to give it a little bit more of a descriptive name, I'm just going to change that variable name to albums. You don't need to do that, but Let's say for descriptive purposes, it makes sense to me. I'm going to say from our albums, get a column hash. And there's some stuff on this already on the site. So please see the show notes where I've linked to more about this. And each one of these should now be an album. So to prove this, what I'll do is I'll just exit and we'll do a var dump on album. So we can see what actually gets uh, looped through here. We'll send this in. And you can see we've just got an associative array, which matches up one to one title, track count, release date, etc with exactly what we put into our table. So that's quite nice. Need to make sure I'm in the feature context, not the API context. So our plan is to take this album or each of these albums as we run through the loop and post these into our API. Now we already have a test that describes exactly how to do this. So you can see given the request body is blah, when I request slash album using HTTP post, then we should get back a 201. So if we just follow what each of these step definitions describes and then re-implement it inside our own code, then in theory, things should just behave as they do for one of these tests that we write out using Gherkin. So in PHP Storm, it's really nice if you just hold down command or control and then click on any of the step definitions. So given the request body is blah, then it takes us to the actual real public function that's gonna get run behind the scenes by Behat. So simply all we need to do 
is called this same public function and as it says here just pass in a string and it says at the top the content to set as the request body in other words this is going to be our JSON so from the feature context it would make sense that if we get access to the API context and then call set request body all we need to do at this point is JSON encode and the built-in PHP JSON encode function is going to transform our album from an array into a JSON string and again we're kind of halfway there at this point again we'll just look back at the album feature and we can see firstly we've set that request body so we've done this same step even though we're working with an array and then it says when I request album using HTTP post so again we'll just command click in there and so we need to call this request path we need to pass in the path to the request and also the verb so not really that difficult so we just need to call that public function the request path on our API context our path is going to be slash album and our verb is going to be post and that's it we're done so for each one of these albums inside our background step we're basically going to follow the standard HTTP post process so let's quickly check our bhat album feature I'm going to send that in and whilst each of the tests is actually failing the background step has gone green so I'll quickly scroll back up and you can see given the albums with the following details blah and it's all green which is kind of weird but what all our background step is actually doing as we've already seen is taking that data from that table serializing it to JSON and sending it in but we don't check whether it was actually successfully received we just check that it was successfully sent which it was it was just sent to example.com and then probably just disregarded unless example.com are doing some serious logging and <laughs> wondering what on earth we're doing so we're about halfway there in terms of our setup but there's like one weird problem that you may not have thought of yet considering that we don't even have a database at this point but what we also need to do after every single one of these scenarios has run is we need to reset the database otherwise yes on the first test run the very first time we run the tests we're going to have id one two and three but then onto this scenario it's going to reset and think to post back in these albums so this is going to be like four five and six and so on and through every single test and then the next time we run the tests this will all fail because this will no longer be number one number two it'll just be whatever's next in the sequence so we need to come up with a way to flatten and refresh our database so we're going to get onto that in the very next video